How you doing? My name is Steve Houston, and welcome back to my video today. We're having a little bit of fun because my golf day. I'm going to go out and play some golf today. But I want to talk to you today about one thing that keeps coming on my mind. Why do mortgage protection agents fail? So I got a sheet here with my top eight reasons why do mortgage protection agents fail. This comes from several years of hiring agents, training agents, and seeing what some do, some don't, and the ones that do succeed, what they're doing right, and the ones that don't succeed, what they refuse to do that caused them to lead to failure. And I've got about eight of these on a sheet. And then I'm going to go over to the whiteboard and tell you what I think is the number one reason people fail. The first thing is not using a proven phone script. You know, it seems like a lot of people just want to jump on a phone and start making dials and, you know, and kind of do it on the fly. That is the number one mistake you can make. You want to get a time-tested and proven phone script that works, right? And you want to get really, really good at handling the objections. That's why I recommend that you start out with aged historical leads from an IMO that provides those leads to you. I'm not talking about redated or recycled leads. I'm talking about you paying the right price for an older lead so you get really good at handling objections before you're spending a lot of money on leads where you're not very good at handling objections. Cash flow, which is not on my sheet, is I think the number one reason why people fail in this business because they don't watch their cash flow. And if you're going to buy leads, it's paramount that you get a coach that can help you with lead selection, the type of leads, and start you out with the older leads so you get good at what I believe is the number one skill, and that is being able to convert a lead into an appointment. So many people want to look, talk about, hey, I want to get really, really good at the product knowledge. Product knowledge doesn't mean anything if you can't get in the house, right? It means absolutely nothing. So you want to get really, really good at getting in the house. Right, and we can work on everything else from that point forward if you're working with the right person. But you got to be able to get a lead and converting that into appointment. Number two is wrong product selection. This to me, again, there's a lot of number ones. This is actually number two on my sheet. But wrong product selection, look, that's why we're in this business. That's why we're working a leads-based sales opportunity. If we want to do anything else, we go knock on doors and go cold calling. And you should do all those things. But the way to scale your income is by buying leads, period, quality leads. So you're talking to people that want your product, not always trying to convince people that they should want your product. That, I mean, write that, that's a writer downer. I mean, that, that is a writer downer. I mean, that is key to your being able to not make just, you know, a thousand bucks a month or 500 bucks a month, but be able to make 10, 15, 20,000 a month and more is the amount of time that you spend kneecap to kneecap in the home with people that are interested in your product. Not in the convincing mode. Not saying you shouldn't do that, but it should be a very small portion of your business. Again, that was a writer downer. That is that is just paramount. And I'll tell you why. What's the, if you learn certain skills in this business, you want to make $1,000 this week and $10,000 next week, the skill set doesn't change, right? It's just about getting more leads, making more dials, setting more appointments, seeing more family, writing more applications. That's it. It only comes down to your work ethic, not your skills or not your knowledge. So the other one is number three, not leading with what your prospect asks for, right? If you're working at the lead program and you're in this industry, they've asked for mortgage section or final expense. They didn't ask for an annuity. They didn't ask for an IUL. And I've got agents on my team as well. I really think I want to give them an investment alternative, right? Please. That's great, but they ask for mortgage station and final expense. Go solve that need first. You'll make six figures a year doing just that. Then you can go back in and offer them other products that you're able to offer them and increase your income or maximize the value of the lead. But the first thing is go in there, no bait and switch, sell them what they ask for. Very simple. Everybody should know that. Okay, number four is not using a repeatable in-home presentation. Again, key. I mean, the only way that you can tweak in your skills and learn, you'll be able to have a repeatable in-home presentation. I've got one that I teach my agents. You can choose whatever you want to, as long as it's been successful in the field at some point. No tweaking. Don't change it if it's been successful. Use that. And then once you start getting cash in your bank account, right, deposits, and you want to change something, and you want to tweak something, I know all you type A individuals out there always like to tweak it, right? If you want to tweak it, tweak it after you're starting to have success using their proven in-home presentation. Then, if you get off track by tweaking it with your tweaks, you can go back to where you have success. But again, if you don't do a repeatable 
presentation on every appointment, how are you ever going to know what you were doing when you're doing it right? Right? That's why you have to stick with an in-home presentation and continue to do that one. Get very, very good at that. Start putting deposits in your bank account. Tweak it if you wish. I know some of you like to tweak it, right? Tweak it if you wish, but at least now you know where you, if you get off track, you can go back where you have any success, right? So number five is selling too much fully underwritten. You're going to sell fully underwritten this industry. It should be about 10% of your business. The other 10% should be a guaranteed issue. 80% should be non-medical simplified issue. Reason why? They're going to find a reason to decline or rate your client, period. If they stick them in the arm of the needle. You don't want to do that, especially if they're over 40 years old. Under 40, it's a judgment call, but they're still going to find some things out. They're in the business, these insurance underwriters, to not approve your client. They're risk managers. They're trying to eliminate risk. So they're looking at the application to find reasons to decline you. If you do the non-med, it's just a matter of simple questions on the application, and you shift the risk to the insurance company. Your client doesn't assume the risk by what they're going to find out with that blood work, right? So it should be about 80% of your business. And by the way, the lead was generated saying no exam. Again, it's go in the home and sell them what they asked for. Overcomplicating it. That's my number six, right? Look, I'll be honest with you. You gotta keep it simple. Some people overthink it. Too much thought process going into it. It's very simple. You get some leads, we make some dials, we book some appointments, we choose the product, we go out and make a presentation, we write some applications, and we rinse and repeat. As long as you're working with somebody that can help you on those things, it, you're golden. Don't overthink it. Your mortgage section or final expense is mortgage section is, is a term product usually. Final expense is a whole life product, right? Follow a system. Keep it simple. Leave your ego out of it until you really get good at doing this. Trust me, you can do it. Anybody can do this business if they're coachable. Okay, not working your pendings. Big deal. I mean, I see this on my own team. Somehow they think that they're going to mysteriously send that application to the carrier and it's going to pop out the other end from submission to commission is your job or your agency's job. If you're working with an agency, it's not the IMO's job. Typically speaking, it's going to be you or your coach or mentor or the agency you're working with is going to help you get them out of pending and get that policy issued and you paid. So follow up on your pending. You just can't stick it in there and hope that it's, you know somebody's going to see it and approve it. And there's a massive insurance companies with a lot going on and you know one glitch on your application Right? That's why we scan all the applications for our agents before they go in. We want to submit clean applications. But there's a lot of times they're going to require more paperwork. They're going to require an addendum. There's going to be a question about the medical records that they did pull up, either fully unwritten or even non-med, because they're going to get that information from the MIB. There's going to be things, it's routine, that they're going to be asking questions, the underwriters. And you're the agent. If you're not working those pennies and follow up on them, it's just going to get stuck there. It'll later time out in a few weeks and it's gone. You don't get paid, right? So work your pennies is very important. No passion about what we do. Again, one of the top ones on my list That's why it's number nine or it's actually number eight. Look, what we do matters. The fact that you're persistent and consistent, who cares about the guy that hung up on you, the, guy, the person that swore at you or you drove up for an hour and a half and they weren't home? Look, that's sales. And I don't really th think what we do is sales. It's more from an educational standpoint. But when you're dealing with people, that stuff's going to happen. They're going to cancel, reschedule, not be home. They're going to forget. They're not going to buy. That happens. We get paid very, 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 very well in this business. So much it ought to be illegal, but it's not. So don't whine about the fact that that stuff's going to happen. It's going to happen. But you're going to get compensated so well, it doesn't matter. Remember, go watch my video. It's the law of large numbers is the key to your success. You can't beat the numbers. The numbers can't beat you. And you're not going to sell them all. But here's the point. That one time where someone hung up on you because they had a bad day or you called them when they were arguing with their husband or their wife and they jumped on you because called them at the wrong time and then you later called them back and they said, hey, uh, we're ready now, come on out. And you went out there and then two months later someone in that family was killed and they got a check because you were persistent. What we do matters. Understand we're not selling cars here and we're not selling vacuum cleaners, period, right? We're selling something that can change people's lives. It can be the difference between people losing their home or keeping the home, and it can be the difference between kids going to college and not going to college. I know it from personal experience. Now, all of these things I'm talking about, if you're with the right coach, I'm not talking about IMOs. I get this 10 times a day. What's the best IMO, Steve? What's the best IMO? And there are the best IMOs, period. And it really depends on you and what you're looking for. Experienced and not experienced. In other words, brand new or been in the industry for a while. I really think that's even subject to, to question because 
We're with the best IMO. We wouldn't be with them. And that's all great. A lot of these things I'm talking about right now, the phone script, the product selection, the work in the pending, should be being taught to you case by case, day by day, paint by the numbers, training and coaching from someone that's doing it. They can teach you those skill sets, not the IMO. They'll have some sort of training. Hopefully not all of them do. Some do, right? But they're not going to be hands on like this, right? Which can all be avoided like by getting the right coach, not, not the fake coaches, not the recruiters, but a real person that's leading from the front doing the business. They can teach you from experience. Not from a book knowledge, right? Not from, well, I haven't really sold anything, but here's, here's what they told me you should do, right? You need the real coach, someone that's actually doing it themselves. I don't know how many times i got to repeat that, so hopefully they'll get through. It's really a combination to find the right coach that's with the right IMO that has the support and knowledge and experience to train you because once you learn these things, you can go anywhere and make money the rest of your life working from your home and have complete work-life balance. So to finish this video up, I'm going to go show you what those things are. So come with me. We're going to take this and we're going to throw it away. Okay, so now you know some of the top reasons why mortgage protection agents fail. But the good news is, is I'm going to tell you how to exponentially change your ratio of success by just making a couple of very good decisions. I'm going to put that video right here in what they call a YouTube card. It should be showing right now. So go ahead and click that link. It'll take you right to that video now for the good news. But before you leave, make sure if you're brand new to the channel, you mash the subscribe button so you get notifications of the new videos. Hit the bell. You'll get instant notifications for live streams. Give me a thumbs up if you like the comment and place me a comment. You can text, email me, or call me if I can help. Have a great day. Bye-bye.